Hello, I'm Gabriele Gattiglia from the Mappa Lab. I'm very happy to speak after Naomi because um, maybe he has given some answer to uh, some critical points that uh, I will illustrate uh, now. Uh, in this uh, brief presentation, I will uh, um, assume uh, a critical point of view on uh, open source, and uh, I will take the role of the David Savage advocate uh, to enlighten some point that uh, um, are um, um, critical. This uh, presentation um, entered in, in my mind when um, the, an, uh, an international uh, journal sent me back uh, my, my peer-reviewed paper. Uh, the referee uh, asked me to explain the FOSS uh, acronym. Uh, he, he write, uh, I'm, I haven't never heard this word. I, I have done a search on Google and uh, you see the, the two free entry <laughs> explain perfectly the acronym, but uh, the problem was that the archaeological community wasn't so aware of the meaning of free open source software. Uh, the, se the second aspect it was mm, to give more a global perspective uh, because Archefoss is uh, an Italian uh, event, uh, but we had to uh, look it, uh, look the FOSS uh, question from a, a wider perspective. Uh, in a certain way, the the impact of open source in archaeology has been surprisingly limited. It has not been part of any radical development in how we conduct archaeology, and in my opinion, and is only my opinion, uh, maybe uh, you are not, uh, you, are, you don't agree with me. Um, in the last years, uh, open source has suffered a loss of appeal among archaeologists. Potentially, the use of open source software should have overcome the limitation dictated by software used currently, leading the use of computer application to match with the goal, the needs, the aspiration of archaeologists. Open source has had the possibility to create computer applications not simply derived from proprietary software, but applications created positively by and for archaeologists. And as Nemi illustrated before, open source has had the possibility to create a collaborative community. But uh, even, not, even if not always, this path was, not, was too often neglected. So I asked me, why? In my opinion, the first reason is uh, that the approach used uh, was mainly a technical approach and less a theoretical approach. This fact um, um, the use of, of, of mainly a technical approach wasn't able to have all the archaeological community to participate to the debate because there was an insufficient recognition of the fact that the intersection of a computer application and archaeology can provide new paradigms and new research venues. So, in a certain way, the open source movement in archaeology was not able to propose new development, new forms of doing archaeology that include new standards, new ways of handling, processing, and modeling information. 
Maybe this is not always true, but this is true on a large scale. As I said before, open source should have gone beyond the mere application of software. In fact, it should have represented an area where archaeology should have focused on discussion about the nature of archaeological data, their definition, representation, and manipulation. The open source movement was not able to create a wide community of practice. A community of practice, namely, is a group of people who share a profession or has a common interest in a particular domain. A group of persons, a group of people who share information and experiences that the member learn from each other to develop themselves personally and professionally. Maybe archaeology has the necessity, the need to create uh, a sort of uh, uh, high energy physics archive experience to share their experience, to share their data, the code, uh, to collaborate uh, more and more. In few words, we can summarize the concept with the fact that the number of archaeologists that share code is yet too small. Uh, Nemi illustrate us a GitHub repository, but how many archaeologists have a GitHub repository for share their few, also even few string of code uh, with other archaeologists. I don't know, maybe Nemi has a, a, a wide experience in this. Five at all? Okay. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> The second reason is connected to education and training. Uh, also in this case, I don't know if this situation is uh, valid for all of Europe or for uh, all over the world, but especially in Italy, there is a complete absence of a proper academic curriculum in the use of open source software in archaeology. On the contrary, it's necessary to give the future archaeologist the possibility to reach a level of competency in computer science, such as to enable them to generate novel insight. Only proper trainer can permit them to engage in the development of new IT tools consonant with archaeological interests, and to foster a deeper conceptual understanding of how applications work and as a necessary step toward the creation of new ones. Maybe not all archaeologists can be uh, IT scientists, but if we foster education, we have the possibility to enlarge the base of archaeologists that will be able to write a string of code, to create tools, to apply open source software to their research. A third reason is the fact that too often has been emphasized the F for free. Open source in this way has become economically advantageous for poorly founded archaeologists, but has not become a core element of archaeology. Archaeophos, and maybe the open source software movement in archaeology, seems to me on the point of losing this battle. Just when a new nourishment in form of more theoretical approach is coming from the introduction of open access and open data instances. So the next question is, will open data in archaeology be the next epic fail? I hope no, but we can discuss about this. Thank you very much.